Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Darwin Project video today, giving you all the information you need to know about this free-to-play Hunger Games Battle Royale that's just launched on the PS4 for the first time and out of early access on Xbox and PC where it was for two years. This game is load of fun. I've had loads of fun with it in the past and I'm so glad it's now on PlayStation for you guys to enjoy. So I thought I'd better give you the information, basically show you how to play the game, show you some little tips a little few features and what you can expect from it it's pretty simple at heart and i just want to run down some of the stuff you should know so don't forget to like the video and check out everything you need to know about the darwin project so it is free to play and like most it has its cosmetic transaction store you can play the game fully without having to worry about anyone having any upper hands due to paying for it there is no pay to win mechanics all the cosmetics are just that cosmetics only there are daily challenges where you can actually earn ramen, which is basically, or ramen, the in-game currency, which you can use real money to buy more of, to buy more cosmetics if you want. Otherwise, you can do a daily challenge. I haven't come up or found any other ways that you can get ramen so far. As of release date, it does look like the in-game currency store that you can usually use the PlayStation Network or the Microsoft Store to buy a currency isn't fully up and running, but I expect that to change and be turned on very soon. The game has had significant changes while it's in early access and in fact an update that went live on Xbox and PC with the launch of it being available on PlayStation 4 has actually made massive changes where you can now choose from three classes. Previously you would choose your different types, your different weapons or your different skills but now it's three classes that have their own set abilities. There is still some customization, and I'll talk you through that as well but that is the big change right now. You also might notice that you've seen other videos showing duos mode that currently is isn't available it's only solos right now the devs haven't officially announced whether or not it'll be coming back but i presume so as it's going to be obviously having some sort of live service maybe don't expect some of the big features you've seen in other battle royals like fortnite it's going to be much much more casual now on the top there you can see it's got the director this is a special mode where you can take part in a match by actually being the director of the match you can choose to give bonuses and buffs to certain players you can choose to nuke a whole grid but you need to be level five in any character to gain access to the director role so officially there is 11 player games 10 players and one director if there is no director then it simply just carries on as normal otherwise you can go ahead and buff players or maybe go on a vendetta against a player that you think is maybe doing a bit too well we'll return to some in-game help in a second but let's get rid of the rest of these menus so you've got a training mode and when you press play you will go through a tutorial so i don't need to teach you how to suck an egg You'll also notice the tabs in the top left, you've got Fan Gift, these are items that you can get, cosmetic items, periodically that you'll get given for completing matches. The idea is that eventually they'll integrate this better with Twitch, which you can do right now, and players, real life people watching you may be able to gift you stuff while you're playing a match. You've also got Shop and Sales, and it does look like they're going to add a Battle Pass to the game very soon too. So before we get into the gameplay, no crossplay as of yet. They have said it's something to look into, but don't expect it anytime soon. It's limited strictly to the platform that you're playing on. And other than that, you've got the most usual options. You can customize really quite a lot to do with the controllers. You can literally customize the aim and all sorts of stuff. So go and check that out. Let's get into the gameplay and show you stuff to do with the menu, the resources, and basically some of your powers and the classes. There are three classes for you to choose from, Jet Wings, Grapple Gauntlet and Headhunter Drone. Yes, they really are some of the worst class names I've ever seen. What you can do with each one of these is customise a few things in terms of your special abilities once you rank up. Originally, you'll only have two abilities that you can choose from, which is in this case the Meteor and Blast Off. You need to be level 3 to get the third ability and level 10 to get your fourth ability and you can only choose two of them for every match. Each class has their own individual abilities. You can change what class you want while you're waiting in the lobby, but be warned you can only do this for one class each time. So if you go try changing to the jetpack class and then you switch it over to the next class, you won't be able to go to the jetpack. This seems like more of a glitch than an actual thing, so be warned though, you will be stuck with whatever class that is. If you take a look at the bottom, you will also see the ability buttons. If you press the circle button, you're going to use one of your abilities. And then if you press the triangle, that will activate your second ability. Obviously, it's the same for Xbox, but with Y and X button instead. 
There is proximity chat. So if you've got a mic, you will be able to talk to players while you're in lobbies, but not, I do believe, while you're in game. The bottom left corner, you can see you've got your health bar on the left, and then you've also got your cold bar on the right. It is a survival battle royale. The cold temperature will start affecting you, and if it goes all the way down to the bottom, you're going to start losing health. You need to craft fires to keep you going, or get hold of some hot coffee, which is basically an item that you can drink will give you a boost. You'll notice that you start off with 600 health and you start off with 100 cold meter and in the top of that you can see the little red skull, that's how many kills you've got. Then you've got the voice chat, you can use the touchpad to, I do believe to turn it on and off quickly. And then lastly, how many players are left, either in the lobby or when you're actually in the game. If you hold the R1 or the RB button, it brings up your items, your traps and stuff that you can craft, as well as your abilities. I'm going to go through this while we start playing the game, but just give you a brief overview. The top items that you can see, starting from the snowball, then you've got the shield, then you've got the fire, then you've got arrows, and then you've got traps. If you press the square button while highlighting the traps, you can see that you can change the traps to a variety of different ones. The bear trap will simply trap a player there and they'll be immobile for a few moments. The pulse wave is going to push them around. The smoke bomb obviously will create a smoke bomb for you to make an escape or attack players. The cage trap also mobilizes players but keeps them in a certain spot and space until they break out. And then the tripwire will track the player so you'll have a brief moment where you'll be able to see where the player is and start tracking their movements. You'll be able to pick up a bunch of different traps while in-game, either through loot boxes or being given to you by the director. So we'll go through that in a while, but you can use the D-pad left, right, up and down to select which ones, but you can only carry up to four different style traps and it's got a certain limit for each amount. So you can have only maybe three smoke bombs, three uh, box traps or three trip wires. And then lastly, we've got the two major resources you're going to be gathering while you're in your game. Something called Darwinium, which is a new resource. It's that yellow canister. You'll find them in and around when you start the match. This is what's going to give you your special abilities, as well as a whole host of other buffs that you can actually buy once you've got enough. And then you need wood from trees, and that will craft you arrows, that will craft you traps, and it will also craft you a shield. So we're in the game now, and pretty much top tip, Go and get yourself a shield. You're going to need five pieces of wood. You can see it's clearly marked out. The trees are very tiny, skinny, not them big, massive redwoods. You know, you'd get a good thousand there. And there's the draw, draw, draw Darwinium. That's the yellow stuff there. It used to be called something else, or it used to be electronics, but they've made it very simplified. This is a loot box. This can have a variety of different things. It can have traps. It can have items like the glider that we see there and a bunch of other stuff. You'd also get med kits and consumables. The consumables are, you can get a speed potion, which speeds you up for a limited amount of time. You can get a hot coffee, which will keep you warm for a small amount of time. Also, a top tip there, you saw me hitting away at that item, that dome. It basically forces you away. So if you've got the right type of gear, you can use it to your advantage. This is the glider in action, just using the D-pad to activate it, and you can see you going all the way across. Certain classes, doesn't matter which one, you won't take any fall damage, you can fall from a great height. But if it is a large height, you may have a small impact which can cause a delay when you land. The bottom left you can see the mini-map and they're the grids. So you're going to get notifications that that grid is now closing and eventually all the grids will close and the circle will start to shrink in until there is no players left. The boxes are really, really, really useful sometimes, but obviously you will get a lot of traps. And if you're not that type of player, or you're not really experienced enough, you might not know when to use these traps. Obviously, baiting it out when you're in the last circles can be really good, but also putting the traps down when you're close to other items that players want. This player didn't even realize I was here. Now your main method of combat is your axe, of course, and it does a hell of a lot of damage. You can see I'm doing 150 damage with each swipe, so it's only going to take four swipes against the player, and if he hasn't got a shield, that means he's going to be brown bread dead. The shield that you can craft with five bits of wood, that will literally just give you one extra swipe or one extra attack defense. You'll also notice there is a mini-map screen here as well. This pinpoints the location of every single player. Obviously, it's a good idea to go into some of these houses and see if you can find one. 
So I had a good start. We've got lots of the Darwinium and I just need a bit more now before I craft my ability. Here you've got to press the R1 or RB and you can craft the two abilities. You can choose which one you want to craft first. So I've gone ahead for the jump boost, which I really like. It sends you right up into the sky. And if you can combine that with another smaller ability that does more damage while firing from the sky, you can do a hell of a lot of damage to other players. I'll go through the class abilities in a separate video. This is more just about general feel and how to play the game. I'm now crafting some arrows up you can see you can hold up to eight arrows you can pick up arrows once you fire them if they miss their target and you can pick up arrows from other players also if they've missed their target speeding up so you guys can see i'm getting 15 darwinium every time i attack one of them canisters and you can get a lot more through killing players or you get some through the boxes and loot boxes you find. I'm laying some traps here as well right now just to show you guys what to do and my first flame Campfires take a few moments to craft and obviously they're going to replenish your cold meter so that you don't start losing health and just above it you can notice that a player has just been killed so you can keep track of who's in the game and who's not and who's been recently taken out. On the minimap on the left you'll notice as well that the orange grid that means that grid you can no longer go in you'll take massive damage if you do and you can see that I am actually getting a special loot crate right now or drop. This is a Darwinium shipment. It's going to give you a big boost of Darwinium so you can go ahead and start using more of your abilities. Once you've bought the ability, you do keep it for the rest of that match, but it's on a cooldown timer. So the cooldown timer normally lasts 30 seconds before you can use it once more. You'll also notice the three circles in between the abilities. These are your upgrades. You can upgrade each one of these three times and it normally costs a little bit less Darwinium. 50, then 100, then 150, I do believe, before you max upgrade each ability. I'll go through these again in separate videos looking at all the glasses, but generally that's what you need to know. So for certain glasses though, one of them gives you extra axe damage. That might be worth buying instead of one of your abilities early on because you might end up running into a player pretty quickly. Top tip here, hit one of these and it will get you across the map very quickly, especially when you're in a bit of a bind, it can throw you out. And using my special ability with the glider, I can hover and take a look at everything around me for loot boxes and Darwinium. Most of the time in the loot boxes you will get traps, but you can get consumables that are really beneficial as well. So moving on, get yourself loot, get into that rhythm. Like I said, you probably want to get a shield the first chance you get, although I haven't got one here. Five pieces of wood, and then you just want to focus on getting as much Darwinium as possible and the loot boxes. My atrocious aim at trying to take out one of these guys, I end up having to whack it. These are small mini loot boxes. You'll also get traps and consumables from them as well. You do have to go over to it though and press the square or the X button, depending on what you're using, to gather whatever it's got inside it. I really lucked out on this one, it gave me a shield. They've definitely streamlined the Darwin project. They've made it simpler and easier to get resources. In the past, you'd have to get leather through killing the deers, and that would craft your armor, and then you'd have to get more hits on trees to get wood. So they've made it all very much more fast-paced, and matches really might only last 20 minutes max. It really just depends on what kind of players you've got in the match, obviously. You can see on the right hand side we had the red screen there. That's the dome closing in, so be careful of that. And just keep gathering them resources until you come across another player. Use the notice boards well as well. Pay attention to where other players are. It's really good to come up on a couple of them fighting each other so you can take advantage. Whenever you do use anything or craft anything, you'll leave clues. These clues can be used to track you. Effectively, the tracker class can also have much more benefits using this sort of stuff. So it will give you a heads up of where to find players. So maybe try and leave clues all in just one spot and get used to you actually looking for clues and finding out where players are. Gauging where they were, it will show you exactly the distance in meters, whether or not they're close enough for you to go and try and attack or find, or whether or not they're long gone. Getting a bunch of kills is going to give you a hell of a lot of experience to level up and unlock more abilities or simply making it to the last two players can also be a good way to get a lot of experience. It just depends what playstyle you are. If you're more cautious, then you're going to make it to the last few players. You've played a battle royale. You know how to play one of these games. You can see the Darwin shipment there. Go for it. That's probably going to be a hotspot for players. So it's always worth checking out to see where it's going. And make sure you're using them signs. Two players battling out here. I'm using my teleport ability. Look how great that is. Gets them right in there. Just a shame I didn't capitalise it on this occasion. The axe damage really does mean you're going to have to time your swings. It's not a case of just spamming away. It is all so important about how you come up against another player. Like I wasn't ready enough there. And my aim's atrocious. I'm getting absolutely 
owned here, even though I was, should have been the one giving them the drop. Luckily, they got concentrated on each other and I could try peppering them with some arrows. It's a lot harder than you think to actually hit someone. If you do get a headshot, you get 200 damage. So it's well worth lining up the shot and being a bit more cautious, occasionally seeing if you can get someone unawares while they're looting. All three of my upgrades are now upgraded fully to the max, so I'm pretty much good to go. I'm as good as I am going to get in terms of what I can do. Just might have been nice to have a few more consumables. That was the only thing that was worrying me as we get closer and closer to the last few players and the last closing circle. One more flame to keep me going. Make sure you stand around it and just don't stand idly still getting headshotted. Always be on the move and this is the time to also craft some other bits and bobs too that you might want. Right now though, I'm gonna show you what you can do with snowballs. Well, kind of. Snowballs can be crafted for free. You can see it there in the inventory menu. These will basically, when thrown, reduce the amount of blue bar that other players have. So obviously, if you can get that to start going low all the way to the bottom, they'll start losing health. Really, really useful for end game, particularly when players are zipping in and out of the restricted zone. If you've got a bunch of snowballs that you can throw at players, you can really cause a lot of damage to them if you get them down below that blue bar's lower limit. As we're closing out this match, I've got to say I'm really enjoying this game and I hope you guys are too. I will do some more in-depth tutorials, possibly, if this video gets a good reception as well. But taking it on, look, I was so close to dying there, but luckily my abilities helped me out and rescued me pretty much from certain death. And we're in the last circle, it starts shrinking and shrinking even more. That's one more enemy done. I don't know if I got the kill or he got the kill. And we're finally here just whacking away and trying to get this last dude. He's at the bottom now. Are we going to get him? He's gone invisible and I'm going to run up and hide. Now the visibility one is pretty decent. It really is good. So to combat that you have to really be another tracker. You can dimly see the thin outline but when stuff's going on it can be quite tough. Really really got lucky here. The guy just didn't know what's going on and I managed to get the last hit and win the match. So to recap, make sure you get a shield going. You're going to need five pieces of wood. After that, you want to get as much Darwinium as possible. And then after that, keep an eye on your cold meter. Always make sure you've got at least one wood to craft your own fire. Look for consumables that give you speed boosts and hot coffee that's going to keep you warm a bit longer. And you'll reap the rewards being stocked up. Of course, also have a bunch of arrows too. That is the Darwin Project. Look out for my special classes video very soon. And I'll see you rat bags for another one.